Public Accounts Committee. We are now in public session and I would like to welcome members to today's meeting and just remind members that mobile phones must be set to airplane mode or turned off. It is not sufficient to put mobiles on silent mode as they continue to interfere with the assembly recording. The session is being recorded in video and audio and can be accessed via live online streaming either on the assembly website or Democracy Live. Agenda item one is apologies. I have received apologies from Mr Hilditch. Any other apologies today? No? Okay, thank you. Agenda item two then is the minutes of the meeting of the 25th of March 2021, which are pages 6 to 16 of your pack. Um, and the minutes are there for you all to see. I'm sure you've read and inwardly digested them. Are you content with those minutes, members? Your, your permission to sign them? <coughs> okay. Agenda item three, then, is the declaration of interests. At each meeting, members must uh, uh, and are required to register relevant financial or other interests in the register of members' interests. Do any members have any interest they wish to declare this afternoon? Uh, Chair, uh, on the correspondence, uh, I have insisted where uh, Blackley had dealings with Mr Pollock. Is this dealings when you've, when you've uh, as a constituent or...? Uh, yes. Right, OK. Yes. Agenda item four, then, uh, is <coughs> matters arising. Members, you will have perhaps seen in the media since our last meeting that Sue Gray, the Permanent Secretary of the Department of Finance, has been offered a new position uh, as the second Permanent Secretary in the Cabinet Office in London. Uh, and Ms Gray, obviously, as you know, uh, was a fairly regular visitor to our committee and was with us not so long ago. So therefore, can I suggest we write to congratulate her on her appointment and thank her for all her work with PAC. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Uh, also, Mr Rodney Allen from the Audit Office, again another regular visitor to our committee, has been appointed as the Northern Ireland Audit Office's Chief Operating Officer. Uh, I have written to him uh, and offered uh, congratulations to him on his appointment. Uh, Mr Donnelly had made me aware of that appointment um, prior to uh, the Easter break. Okay, um, if you're content, members, we we'll move on. Broadcasting, can you please bring in Kyle Bingham, Northern Ireland Audit Officers, Assembly Support Officer, to the meeting? Mr Bingham, can you see and hear us okay? Good afternoon, Chair and members. Yes, I can. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And so we move on to agenda item five, which is correspondence, which pages 19 through to 198 of your pack. Uh, and at this stage, we're joined in, in the room by Mr. Donnelly, CB, the Comptroller and Auditor General. Mr. Rodney Allen, Chief Operating Officer, is also uh, with us this afternoon. And Mr. Allen, I've, I've written to you, but uh, I now publicly congratulate you on your, your, your uh, new position and wish you all the well in your new role. That's very kind, Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, members, I refer to uh, correspondence dated the 12th of March 2021, at pages 20 69 of your pack from the Audit Committee regarding the review of governance and accountability arrangements for the Northern Ireland Audit Office and NIPSO. This also includes the terms of reference and the, NI, uh, the NIAO report on review of governance and accountability arrangements for the Audit Office. Members, uh, I suggest we deal this matter in closed session at agenda item 10 uh, and any other business. Is that, are members content? Content? Content. Thank you. Uh, members are referred to correspondence dated the 22nd of March 2021 on pages 70 to 73 of your pack from Whistleblower regarding email of the 12th of March 2021 through Miss Leslie Hogg, the Clerk of the Northern Ireland Assembly, on the 15th of March 2021. Uh, again, I suggest that we deal with this matter in closed session at agenda item 10. Are members content? Content. I refer to an email received on the 25th of March 2021 on page 74 of your pack from a whistleblower via Mr Andrew Muir, MLA, regarding Sport NI Sustainability Fund. Um, members, as you will be aware, at our last meeting on the 25th of March 2021, I made a statement on behalf of the Public Accounts Committee regarding the COVID-related expenditure. The statement read, I have spoken with the Audit Office and have confirmed it will be scrutinising the COVID-related expenditure in the Audit uh, of Government Departments in their uh, public reporting programme. The Audit Office have also confirmed that this type of a grant expenditure 
will be examined. Members, in line with this statement, are you content that we forward this email to the Northern Ireland Audit Office for their consideration and report back to us uh, uh, as t- part of the wider report into this issue? Agreed. 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 Thank you. Members are referred to correspondence received on the 25th of March 2021 at pages 75 through to 115 of your pack from Mr Raymond Pollock regarding an AD plant operating on his property and inquiring into the generating electricity from renewable energy. Uh, do any members have any comments they wish to make? Uh, just to the Chair, um, I'm aware of this uh, situation, Chair, and I know too the frustration on the part of uh, Mr Pollock and the likes that for the view that sort of all avenues uh, to them uh, have been sort of um, limited, restricted or even closed. So I'd appreciate now uh, your comments that on uh, the content of uh, his submission. I'll not be making any comment on it. Um, the, the, in terms of the... Mr. Donnelly, well, have you any... way forward with it, yeah, you know, yeah, as such. Yeah, so. fair enough. But, Mr. Donnelly, have you any comment you wish to make? Uh, yeah, no, we were very much aware of um, the, the issues raised by Mr. Pollock uh, when we were doing the study on renewables. Mm-hmm. In fact, um, the representations made through, uh, through an MLA uh, representing Mr. Pollock was one of the factors we took into account when deciding to do the study in the first place. So uh, there is reference to that case in the in the renewables uh, report. So we're, we're very very aware of of the issues in there, and we have flagged up the more generic points okay. in, in the renewables report. So it would be fair, fair to say that um, um, you being aware of this, uh, the, and you're dealing with in the report, that we will leave it uh, sitting at that. In, in terms uh, of well, um, if members have any other comments or points that you wish, uh, having read all the material that you wish to mm. reflect in your own report, that, that you, yes. you may wish to consider. Yeah. Well, I think Mr um, McHugh, having declared an interest and made, made those comments, if you, if, you want, if you have any information you want to relay through to the Audit Office, I think um, that might be the best way forward. Yeah, well, I, I don't have any additional information. In fact, it's all contained within the submission made by Mr Pollock. Okay. So, members content? Intent. Yeah. We leave it with the audit office. Okay, thank you. And we will note the correspondence from Mr. Pollock. Uh, members are referred to correspondence dated the 26th of March 2021, on pages 116 of your pack from Fergal Stewart regarding the £500 student hardship payments. Mr. Stewart raised the issue with that universities and colleges are potentially being paid £2 million to administer a scheme that is worth £20 million, in other words, 10% of the fund. Um, Mr. Donnelly, would you like to comment on this? Uh, oh, it's a fair issue that Mr. Stewart has raised, and um, <coughs> well, there, there is a question there. The, you know, you, um, the admin cost at face value does look high, so yeah. uh, there could be a question to the department how they arrived at that figure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so. Okay. Um, members, are you content that we forward the correspondence to the Northern Ireland Audit Office, and that we, as a committee, then write to the Economy Department seeking further clarification of the cost of the uh, administration of the scheme. Members contend? Contend. Yeah. Great. Okay, thank you. Um, members, I refer to correspondence dated the 26th of March, pages 117 to 186 of your pack from the Committee of Justice who have forwarded correspondence received from uh, a member of the public regarding Whistleblown's submission in relation to the boundary, dis- uh, the boundary dispute. Uh, they have requested that their correspondence is treated as whistleblowing and have asked the committee uh, for justice to forward it to the Public Accounts Committee and the Northern Ireland Audit Office on that basis. These papers uh, are the proceedings go back to 2007. Mr. Co- Mr. Donnelly, um, you obviously may well have prior knowledge of this, would you? Uh, no, we have seen the papers. We have looked at them, and be, to be honest, it's not a case for us. Um, mm-hmm. It, it seems that there's obviously a, a long-running legal issue here. Um, so sometimes, just because whistleblowing or fraud word is mentioned, then people think it's for us. But uh, it doesn't seem to be within yeah, the remit of my it, office, to it, be honest. It's too private. Um, uh-huh. Uh, there, 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 doesn't, there, there doesn't appear to be a public money yeah, issue in it, uh, uh, and if that, that there, there is someone on the administration of justice, that's yeah. not really, you know, yeah. 
uh, my remit. My, my, my understanding is, having looked at it and uh, come to the conclusion that it's a dispute between two private individuals and public money doesn't come into it. So I really don't think it's an issue for the Public Accounts Committee, Mr Beggs. Uh, yes, it, it appears to be a civil dispute. Uh, I'm actually surprised that the Justice Clerks forward it to us because I don't see how there is public funds involved other than... You know, I, you know, it's a dispute between two, two, two individuals. Um, so I would concur with your thinking. Yeah. Are our members content? Mm. Yep. OK, that's great. Thank you. Um, so we will just simply note... Um, Refer to correspondence on the 29th of March uh, 2021 at pages 187 to 194 of your pack from Noel Craig, a retired teacher, in which he refers to the PAC's report on special educational needs. Mr Craig is concerned about training for professionals in autism and the lack of offering of by the health and social care trusts in uh, applied behaviour analysis despite the availability of expertise both in, North, in uh, both Northern Ireland universities. This would be... Uh, it would appear to me to be outside the remit of our recent report into special education needs. Um, and I would say this, though, as a, excuse me, as a member of the Education Committee, uh, we, we did have um, uh, a discussion around some of these issues yesterday. And uh, I, I think that um, it would be, uh, I would suggest that it would be germane and, and timely to forward this to the Education Committee for their consideration if members are in agreement. Agreed, is appropriate. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. Okay, thank you. Members are referred to correspondence due to the 31st of March 2021 at pages 195 and 196 of your pack from Mr Robinson, the Health Minister, to the Business Office regarding COVID-19 indemnity arrangement for the spring-summer 2021. The Minister is notifying the Assembly of the indemnities that the Department has entered into by means of this letter. This letter has been copied to the Chairs of the Health and Public Accounts Committees. Are you content to note? Yep. Agreed. Thank you. Great. Members are referred to correspondence dated the 7th of April 2021, pages 197 to 198 of your pack. Again, from Health Minister Robin Swan to the Business Office regarding one-off payment to... Um, HSC charitable trust funds. The Minister stated that in order to supplement the work of those funds going forward and to further support staff as we move out of the pandemic, he has recommended a disbursement uh, to be split evenly between the five main trusts and to be used to provide support to staff. As required by appropriate guidance, executive colleagues' approval has been sought and secured for this one-on payment. Uh, Mr. Donnelly, is anything you want to comment on there? Uh, only to say, I, I am each of the health trusts have, um, you know, um, a charitable trust fund account, uh, and I audit those accounts. So, in due course, I'll, I'll be able to see this money flowing in and how it is spent. So, uh, it'll be subject to audit in the normal way. Okay. Are members content to note? Agreed. Thank you. Members, we continue uh, in open session. Um, agenda item six, then, is the memorandum of reply and management of the NI Direct Strategic Partner Project, helping to deliver digital transformation, the land web project, an update, which are pages 200 to 208 of your pack. And at this stage, I invite Mr Donnelly, Mr Allen and Mr Bingham uh, to contribute to the meeting. And just to remind members that... Uh, the memorandum of reply contains the committee's recommendations and the executive's response to these. The Treasury uh, Office of Accounts, DO, Department of Finance works with each department on producing the MOR, which should be produced within eight weeks of publication of the PAC's report. Today we will consider each recommendation to ensure the department has responded appropriately and fully to the PAC's recommendations. Members, if the MOR refer to the MOR reply and the management of the NI Direct Strategic Partner Project, helping to deliver digital transformation stroke LAM web project, uh, an update which is in your pack, pages 200 to 208. <coughs> the memorandum on the project was uh, presented uh, to the Northern Ireland Assembly on the 25th of March 2021 by the Minister of Finance, Conor Murphy, MLA. Members, in summary, there were 11 recommendations coming of the report. All recommendations were accepted by the Department except recommendations 3 and 5, which were partially accepted. Um, 
So the recommendations are detailed in your packs, uh, and um, I'm simply drawing attention to the fact that all recommendations were accepted, parts in three and five, which were partially accepted. I don't propose to read through them all if members are content, um, but if any member has any issues they want to raise around them, the floor is yours. <clears throat> are members content? Content. Content. Mr Donnelly? Uh, generally, it's a very positive response, Chair. Um, and uh, there's just one uh, I would mention. Recommendation one is probably the recommendation has been interpreted fairly narrowly. So the, it, it, I'll just read it. The committee recommends that um, the department carries a deep culture audit of its own department, and uh, this is rolled out across the civil service. And um, its accept, the department accepts this recommendation, uh, but. Um, and it says DOF will engage suitable expertise to carry out a deep culture out with respect to contract management. I suppose when this was crafted, we had a wider sort of sense of what a culture audit would be. Um, so the, strictly speaking, they've ticked the box on, on the recommendation, but uh, maybe we'd expect um, just a, a wider sort of assessment. Um, on the partially accepted ones, um, I think it was three, um, it was really that there's work done across the civil service and arms length bodies that they, they do an audit of um, staff and contract management commercial skills. They're sort of strictly, they're saying, um, well, our ambit doesn't cover the arms length bodies. Uh, that's a very narrow, uh, what they should be doing is actually working in partnership with the arm's length bodies and if their skills and expertise in the arm's length bodies, that should be shared in partnership or a small place in Northern Ireland. So they're, they're taking a slightly narrow definition of the recommendation. Okay. So that, that, that's really all. Uh, it's just the, uh, it would be nice if they were taking just a slightly wider yeah. uh, interpretation of them. Or strictly speaking, the signed up on the recommendations. Okay, can I, can I make a suggestion that ordinarily you would say that these folk, we should look at them in a, in a year's time? But in a year's time it will be depending on the good burgers of Northern Ireland whether or not you're all sitting here, whether or not we are here, or whether or not you're in this committee. Uh, so therefore, can I suggest that we asked uh, for a review of this in six months' time? Maybe the committee be uh, happy enough with that? We'll have we look at it then at that stage? Yep. Okay, agreed? Agreed. Members content? Agreed. Okay, thank you. Members, we will now go into closed session for a first consideration of the draft report on capacity and capability in the Northern Ireland Civil Service. And can we please bring into the meeting Ms. Christine Bird, Audit Manager, Mr. Connor McGowan, Senior Auditor. Um, Ms. Burns, Mr. McGowan, can you see and hear us okay? Yes, I can hear you fine, thank you. Okay. Yes, sir, thank you. Okay, okay, members, we're now in closed session. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 30. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 30.